Hey guys, this is going to be a bit of a different video than what I normally record. This video is going to be on ways you guys can travel the world for cheap. Possibly even free. So the thing is, I've always wanted to travel. I grew up in a kind of secluded area, so I always felt the need to get out and do stuff, and it was hard for me to do that. As I got older, I'm sure a lot of you have realized, it's pretty damn expensive to travel. Even just locally can be expensive. So after a couple years of research, I've put together a lot of different resources for traveling for cheap or free. In this video, I'm only going to cover five of them. Two of them you've probably heard of already, and the other three you might not have. And if you like this video, let me guys let me know in the comments if you guys would like to see another video like this, because I have a lot of resources and I'd be happy to share them. So the first and most important thing when it comes to traveling and trying to find out stuff like this is you have to get good at searching stuff. You gotta learn how to use Google or search engines to your advantage. Just because you haven't heard of something doesn't mean it doesn't exist, so you have to go out of your way to look for it. In a way, watching this video is doing that. So basically, for more info, Google it. There's so many opportunities for traveling the world for cheap or free and having a good, safe time doing it. But now for the first resource, Peace Corps. So I'm just going to type Peace Corps or Peace Corps if we wanted to spell it out the way or say the way it's spelled. Uh, basically, it's peacecorps.gov, which I believe is a worldwide organization that you can use to travel the world. So Peace Corps is pretty cool. You basically sign up to stay in a country for, I think it was like two years or something like that. And you do a very specific job. I think you're able to even choose which country you go to and choose which job you do. But the issue I found with Peace Corps is while it's amazing, you have to have like a bachelor's, uh, which is a degree. Now, not everybody has a bachelor's like that. So it's not really the most convenient thing unless you're specialized in a field. Now, I might even be wrong, it might have been an associate's degree, but the point is, it's not easy because you have to have training. It's a great program that is very well known, and it is definitely safe. A lot of people have used it. I highly recommend it if you have a degree and if you can get in. But for everybody else in the world who wants to travel but they don't have that, that's what the rest of these uh, resources are for. Before I get into the next one, I just want to say, from what I've heard, a lot of the people who sign up for Peace Corps don't actually get into their uh, traveling opportunity for up to two years. I don't know about you, but I want to travel now. I don't want to wait two years after I've already gotten my bachelor's just to basically get into the program. But if you want more info on Peace Corps, I do think it's a great program if you have a bachelor's or if you're basically able to get in. So check their website out and maybe Google and maybe even Reddit to get some uh, personal experiences. Now on to the next resource, teaching English in a foreign country. Now, if you know English and you're d somewhat decent at it, you know, maybe you need to take a few classes on like Khan Academy, which is a website you can use for practicing academic skills. Or maybe just you're good enough at English already. You can get a simple certification called TEFL, Teach English in a Foreign Language. I think it's 1400 US dollars to take the whole course. And then when you finish, you get a pretty much worldwide recognized certification that allows you to work at a lot of universities and uh, schools around the world and teach English. A common misunderstanding people have is teaching English in a foreign country requires you to know their language. That is not true. They're not paying you to speak their language. They're paying you to speak English. So that's all they care about. There's actually a couple different kinds of certifications for teaching English in foreign countries. From what I've heard, TEFL is a really easy one. It's well recognized. It's kind of cheaper. Uh, you can take it online. So I personally would go with TEFL. Uh, but like I said, there's other options that might work for you. If you wanted to teach English in a foreign country, you know, this is when you would start researching and seeing what's best for you. Speaking of researching with teaching English in a foreign country, if this is something you're interested in, which it's very cool. And I mean, it's unbelievable to be able to travel the world and teach English and like help people. I think it's great. But there's an expert on the subject. It's a YouTuber named Ben Teaches English Abroad. I highly recommend you check his channel out. I've been a subscriber for a couple years now. This guy's great. He's an entrepreneur mindset. He talks about how to basically make a lot of money, be successful, do what you love, and be happy with your life. He gives all his experiences on teaching English in foreign countries, which I think he's been doing for 20 years now. Um, he tells you the good, the bad, how to protect yourself, how to make things work in your favor. He's got self-help stuff, obviously business-minded uh, videos. I have that recommend him. 
So here's his YouTube channel. If you're interested in teaching English abroad, you really should check it out. Honestly, he's just a good person to listen to because he gives some really good information and advice, talks about his experiences and everything else. And he's definitely the expert on the subject. So that's how you can get more information for teaching English in foreign countries. But 1400 bucks just for the certification is kind of a lie. And maybe you don't want to teach English in a foreign country. Maybe you want to do something else. I live in the United States. Maybe I want to go to a different state. I can't teach English in a different state without a degree. So there are more options for traveling cheap. The next two I want to talk about is a branch of traveling called volunteerism, where basically you volunteer while you travel. Well, what does that mean? Well, what that means is you might work on somebody's farm for a few hours a day. You might work in their coffee shop. You might work in an orphanage. There's volunteer opportunities where you work in a school teaching English. You know, there's all different kinds. It just depends on what you're looking at, what website you're on, and stuff like that. Some of them, like Workaway, even pay you. So Workaway is my personal favorite. Uh, it has the most to offer, and it seems to be the most reasonable, in my opinion. It all depends on what you guys want in your travel experience. Workaway has as many options as you could possibly come up with, with all kinds of people all around the world uh, offering for you to stay at their place. How it works is you get a business or a family or whatever, however it happens, someone signs up to be a host on Workaway and they put their country in and basically stuff like that. And then you as the worker uh, would go and uh, look for the country you wanted to travel to. Maybe look for uh, just what the work you wanted to do. And it would narrow down your search to all the hosts in that area and you would be able to see what they offer um, and what their job is and if they pay. Now when you're doing work away and volunteerism in general, it's not going to be backbreaking work. Now there might be a couple odd ones out where they might not have a good idea of how they're supposed to be treating their workers but you find out about that in the comments. What I mean by that basically is they there might be like one or two hosts that thinks you should work eight hours. Um, most of them don't. Most of them require four or five hours a day and you'll see that in their little, uh, I guess, application or whatever. For example, let's say I wanted to go to Italy. I just click on find a host at the top and let's click on Europe and scroll down until we see Italy. Now I could choose a region if I want, but I'd rather not. So I'm just going to click on show results and you can see we got all kinds of results right here. If we stay at the top, you see this is the title. I'm just going to click on this one real quick. It's got a pretty good rating. 28 people gave it a five star review. So that's pretty good. Uh, they always reply to people. They reply within two days. You got some pictures right here. We could uh, sort through. That looks not too bad, actually. Um, let's see here. This is their availability. Right here is an important point. The minimum required stay. They will only accept you if you stay for at least a month. Not every place is like that. That's just this place. If you keep scrolling down, you can see information like the description, the type of help they'll be asking for, uh, other stuff, and then the reviews at the bottom. So obviously with the reviews being as stellar as this, I would say this place is definitely a good place to go to. I mentioned some of these places pay you. So here's a perfect example. This one says host offers payment. So that means if you work here, they'll pay you. Something to keep in mind is they might have a specific way they pay you. So when you do work away, they're gonna let you stay at their house and they're gonna give you food for free. All they expect you to do is that little bit of work you signed up for. I've seen one host in my experience looking at all these uh, who says the first 20 hours of work you do is unpaid and then any hours after that is paid because they're thinking, well, your board and food was paid for with that first 24 hours. So if you wanted to be extra sure, you just read the description and see what they talk about. Like see this place right here, maximum of five hours a day for five, hour, five days a week. Doesn't look too bad. Tons of good reviews. You guys get the idea. Workaway is by far my favorite and seems to be the best because it has the most options. I've always wanted to work at an orphanage in Nepal because I feel like I'd be actually able to help people, help children in a developing country that needed that help. It's a lot easier to find opportunities like that on a safe, well-known website like Workaway where you can see people's reviews about that orphanage and where you'd be staying. So yeah, Workaway is great. 
The next resource is called Woof, Worldwide uh, Organization of Farmers, or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but it's basically WWOOF. Another great place. You can travel the world, and they are focused on working on farms. I have seen some listings for, you know, working in a coffee shop for someone who also owns a farm, but, you know, it seems to be almost always having to do with the farm. But that's not always bad, because if you wanted to go to Hawaii, you can choose to go to Hawaii and stay at a farm that only requires you to work four hours a week. And then when you think about it, you're telling me I can stay in Hawaii for as long as I want, with my room and my food paid for, and all I have to do is work on your awesome little farm for four hours a week? When can I leave? You know? You can't beat that. So with Wolf, you just have to click on destinations and select which country you wanted to go to. Um, and then you would get information about that country as well as be able to find the hosts. Now each country has their own kind of separate wolf page. So they're going to be structured a little differently. Also, as far as I know, most wolf uh, hosts will not pay you. This is all volunteer at this point, but it's like, you, again, you got to stay at, in a foreign country with your room and your food paid for, and you just work a few hours a day. Like you can't beat it, you know? Something I do want to say real quick before I get too much into it, Woof and uh, Workaway, and honestly most of the uh, voluntourism websites do charge you $50 a year from a yearly membership. Um, now you might think, oh, deal breaker, but think about this. You can't find a hotel for $50 a night. You know, so with this you pay $50 and theoretically you can travel all of Europe for $50. You know, you just got to get the ticket there and then you're done, you know, so you really can't beat it. Also with Wolf, it's uh, that membership is per country. So you can't just get like a one membership for the entire world. You know, if I wanted to go to Italy, I got to get the $50 Italy membership for the year. But then if I wanted to go somewhere else, I got to get theirs. So, yeah, I think Wolf is another really good one. You guys got to check out. It's super well known and a lot of people have used it. On the note of Wolf, though, I recommend that you guys go to Reddit when you're interested in uh, possibly using Wolf to see people's reviews. There's a lot of people out there who've used Wolf and you can get their experience, their uncensored experience about what it was like working in a country or on a farm. Another thing I forgot to mention, just like there's this name called Voluntourism for this type of travel, there's also a name called Agritourism, which is for stuff like Wolf, where you're kind of working on a farm, doing some kind of stuff like that. Now there's other websites and services like this, but I'm actually gonna save that for another video. I'm gonna show you guys a really cool one if you ever wanted to learn some kind of martial arts. So this website is called bookmartialarts.com. See, I've always wanted to go to China and study at one of their temples and learn Tai Chi or Kung Fu. I've also thought it might be interesting to learn Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in Thailand um, or study yoga in India. Here's the problem though. I don't speak any of those languages, and I don't know any of the temples. I would go there having no idea where I was going, what I was doing, and hope that I could barely communicate enough to find out a place that may or may not be safe. So, you know, in my situation, it might be hard for me to find a place to study at, but that's where bookmartialarts.com comes in. You just type in what you want to do. I want to learn Tai Chi. Press enter. And press enter again. And you can see all the places you can go to, and there's a lot of them. And you can uh, narrow it down by which country. We got Thailand, China, Indonesia, Cambodia, India, Philippines. The list goes on. Now, some of these places are a lot more like a resort place, uh, so they might charge a little bit more. I saw one uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu course that was like, I think it was like four or 500 bucks a week, which is extremely expensive. Most of them aren't that high, but that one, I think that place was way more of like a touristy place. And if that's what you're looking for, then, you know, there you go. Now you can also search by the time limit that you can be there. So you can do that by clicking on the duration tab right here. See what I really like about bookmartialarts.com is you can see how some of these super cheap, reasonably priced temples are. See, they're not trying to make you poor. They're doing this. Kind of like, think about it this way. There's a limited number of space. They're offering the world the chance for them to stay at their temple with food paid for and learn high quality uh, martial arts. And usually they teach the language as well. 
So, you know, some of these are really reasonably priced. Like, for example, you can stay three months in a Shaolin temple in China with the opportunity to learn, I don't know, Sanda, uh, Baji, I don't know what those two, uh, Wing Chun, Tai Chi, Qigong. For 1800 bucks, you could stay there for three months in China. That's cheaper than one month where I live. So, you know, with an opportunity like this, you just save up a few thousand dollars and you can stay in China for like a year or two or wherever you wanted to go. Here's one, nine months for 4700 which that might seem like a big price tag, but holy crap, that's cheap. That's like two months where I live. Two months of rent, I should say. So for two months of rent, you can stay in China, learning Chinese and Kung Fu. Eh, you can't beat that. For nine months, nah. But while the name sounds like martial arts, which implies fighting, they do have stuff like yoga. Before I wrap this video up, I will be including the link to this website in the description of this video. It, it kind of goes over everything I talked about, uh, but it covers three different ways of traveling that I haven't covered yet, like home swaps, um, hospitality networks, and whatever the hell that is. Combining all this information, you guys really should have a lot more options available to you, and you should have a much better understanding about just how easy it is to travel the world for dirt cheap, maybe free, and possibly make money doing it. I don't know about you guys, but I'm definitely going to be studying and uh, doing online college classes while I'm traveling the world, getting paid. You know, you can't beat it. But that's the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. See you later.